Hello everyone, and thanks for joining. Today, I'll be presenting IT process automation with Umnitsa and Jamf. My name is Trent Seed, and I'm the co-founder and chief architect of Umnitsa. I've been developing software for the last 20 years, and for the past 10 years, I've had the pleasure of pursuing Umnitsa and helping organizations effectively manage their enterprise technology at scale. For today's agenda, we'll start with a brief overview of enterprise technology management. We'll then talk about what it means to establish a single source of truth for your technology, where you see not only your Apple devices managed in Jamf, but the rest of your environment as well, including your Apple devices or your Windows devices, your cloud devices, your SaaS applications, and so on. From there, we'll cover end-to-end -end business process automation within Umnitsa and take a look at a few examples, including offboarding. Last but not least, We'll talk about how ETM enables you to enforce security and compliance policies for your organization. To start, let's talk a little bit about enterprise technology management. Organizations have long used systems of record for key elements of their business. You may have a sales force to manage your customer relations, you may have a workday for your human capital, and you may have an Oracle NetSuite for your ERP. In today's increasingly complex environment, it's imperative that organizations also have a system of record for their technology, which is the ETM solution. Now, what exactly is ETM or enterprise technology management? If we go a level deeper, by enterprise technology, we're really referring to a few key areas. Your endpoints, which are your desktops, laptops, mobile devices, and tablets. Your networking, which could be both physical and virtual appliances your cloud, which could be virtual machines or containers running across Google Cloud, Azure, or AWS, your applications, which are not only your desktop installed software, but your SaaS cloud-based applications as well, not to mention your accessories, which are your peripheral devices like headsets, mice, and keyboards. That's what we mean by technology. By management, we're really referring to managing the lifecycle of your technology from the very beginning, typically time of purchase, all the way through deployment, monitoring, securing, servicing, as well as end of life. The challenge is that data and processes are spread across disconnected silos. If you ask around the organization, how many devices do we have? You're likely going to get a different answer depending on who you ask. If you ask the Jamf admin, you'll get the number of Apple devices in your environment. If you ask the Intune or SCCM admin, you'll get the number of Windows devices. If you ask security, they may come back with the number of devices enrolled in endpoint protection, such as Sophos, CrowdStrike, or Carbon Black. If you ask ops, you may get the number of cloud resources running across Amazon, Google, or Azure. And on top of that, you're procuring devices from all kinds of resellers or even directly from the OEM, which contains a lot of rich purchasing data. You also have a user directory, which is instrumental in allowing us to assign ownership attribution to your technology, and more than likely, you also have an ITSM as well for ticketing and servicing. As you can imagine, any kind of holistic reporting or any kind of holistic process orchestration is incredibly difficult to do, given your technology data is spread across multiple best-of-breed solutions based on the platform, the OS, the device, and so on. If I want to run a report across my entire environment and say, show me everything that's unencrypted, that may require running a similar yet different query across multiple systems, which is manual and, as we know, can be time consuming and error prone. ETM by UNITSA is a layer on top of your existing infrastructure, on top of your existing investments. And what we do is we connect the systems in your environment and build out a single source of truth for the entirety of your enterprise technology. In many cases, different aspects or different slivers of data about a device may live across different systems. As we integrate data, we reconcile and build out a unified digital twin where you can see all of the information for a given device from a single view, rather than needing to look across two or more point solutions to gather the full context. Umnitsa is agentless by design, which means you don't need to replace anything and you don't need to install yet another piece of software on your technology endpoints. Now, for the first time, it's finally possible to build out end-to-end -end key business processes that span across our environment so that we can improve security, compliance, audit, employee experience, as well as finance. Now, let's dive a little bit deeper into what it takes to achieve a single source of truth for your organization. 
Industry adoption of REST-based interfaces paves the way for data consolidation and process orchestration. Over the last 10 years, software vendors have increasingly offered more programmatic ways to extract data and interact with systems through REST APIs. In the past, we were forced to export data to a spreadsheet, and in some cases, we're even more limited. Working across multiple spreadsheets is time-consuming, error-prone, and certainly not scalable as the number of devices coming online continues to skyrocket. REST APIs are now table stakes for any modern SaaS application and enable us to extract data and achieve a unified single source of truth. Not only do these interfaces allow us to synchronize data bidirectionally, but we can also take that information and turn it into action across any one of your connected systems. Building a holistic digital twin of a technology requires normalizing data across multiple sources. We may have data made available at time of purchase, like the PO number, the price, the purchase date, uh, coming from CDW or SHI. As the device is received, imaged, enrolled, and comes online, we're getting a bunch of additional rich information from Jamf, such as the CPU, the OS, the memory, the hard drive, and even the encryption status of the hard drive as well. Beyond that, we may have a security endpoint tool, such as CrowdStrike or Carbon Black deployed, which will tell us if the antivirus agent is running and if the antivirus signatures are up to date and so on. In many cases, we can connect these disparate slices of data for a device into a unified record through the use of unique identifiers, typically the serial number. In some cases, that data may not be available, in which case through configuration, we can fall back on alternative attributes such as the host name, the MAC address, and so on, so that we can properly reconcile a device. There are other cases where data is coming from systems that are not mutually exclusive, meaning we may be getting the list of software for a particular endpoint from Jamf, and an additional agent is also giving us a snapshot of that same software. In this case, you can configure rules and permissions in NHTSA such that you can define which criteria is to be used. With a unified view, you have complete visibility into the entirety of your enterprise technology, which again paves the way to improve your organization's security compliance, audit, finance, and employee experience. This is an overview of UNITSA's ETM platform. Starting from the bottom, we can see just a small subset of the many technologies and integrations supported by UNITSA out of the box. As mentioned, we are agentless by design. We're not looking for you to install additional software on your endpoints. We utilize your existing homes and your existing investments through REST APIs to consolidate and bring everything together. As we bring in your data through our REST API framework, we begin to correlate and normalize your data via our scalable microservices. We have a number of key business objects that are also available in the system with a completely flexible data model so that you can track and manage what's most important for your business. Among these objects include endpoints, applications, cloud, networking, users and roles, as well as contracts. The ETM platform also supports custom objects where you can define and configure your own entities, which opens up many additional use cases. The UNITSA platform provides best practices and enables your organization to improve security compliance while giving you the ability to access your estate through dashboards, reporting, and analytics, as well as a way to configure workflows to automate end-to-end -end business processes across your multiple systems. With all of your data in a single source of truth, we can finally build out and automate business processes from a homogeneous environment across our many systems in our environment. For a moment, let's uh, talk about the life cycle of a piece of technology. Now, depending on the type of technology, if it's a hardware endpoint or if it's a piece of SaaS software, these stages may vary ever so slightly. But generally speaking, this is what we can expect for our hardware endpoints. In most cases, organizations today are only really tracking a device once it has reached the image and deployed stage, meaning it's come online, it's phoning home into client management, and we can start to see some information about the machine. From our perspective, it's essential to start tracking the device as early on as possible in the life cycle, which is at time of purchase. If we buy a device from CDW or SHI, at that point in time, a record will automatically be created in UNITSA with the purchase price, the PO number, the serial number, and some additional attributes. Once the device has been imaged and comes online, we supplement and backfill that existing record that we started during the purchasing phase 
with all of the rich information available from the Jamf API. And as other systems continue to come online, like security endpoint and so on, that information will continue to backfill and round out our unified record. In some cases, we might actually be drop shipping a pre-imaged or pre-enrolled device directly to a remote employee, which Unitsa can support as well. We can even set up workflows to get explicit confirmation from the employee that they did receive the device. And we can always send out quarterly verifications to ensure that the device remains in their possession. Throughout the life cycle, a device may be assigned or reassigned multiple times. By tying in your user directory, we're able to track all of that ownership attribution. And again, for an offboarding perspective, we can understand who has which devices for which purpose. From a security perspective, since we're getting data from your security management as well as your client management, we can reconcile and notify you if we see a device is missing from Jamf that's enrolled in Carbon Black or vice versa. As we're maintaining a device, we're more than likely filing service desk tickets. And with UNITS's ETM, you can correlate all of that service activity back to the record so that you have full context. And in fact, within the service desk, UNITSA offers an extension where you can view all of the data about an employee's device right there in the service desk uh, window. So you don't have to jump into additional systems. And last but not least, we assist with the end of life process as well. Whether you're recycling the device, donating the device, destroying it, or if it's going under a legal hold, those are all processes that UNITSA can support as well. I've mentioned a few times that UNITSA's ETM enables you to automate business processes across your enterprise technology. This is made possible via the workflow engine. We can see a, a small snapshot of that on the right. And what this really is, is a drag and drop interface designed such that any non-technical line of business user can configure or modify a business process. Every workflow begins with a begin block, which we can see here in green. And that is where we can specify the criteria under which this process is to run. This criteria can be any attribute coming from any one of your connected systems on behalf of the technology or even a user. We also have an API block, which we can add to the workflow, which comes with a catalog of presets. So if I want to send a message on Slack or create a ticket in ServiceNow, or even update a device in Jamf, it's very easy to simply drop in the API block, select your preset, and you're up and running. The API block itself also supports an advanced mode, which is akin to Postman or another HTTP client tool that you've perhaps used in the past, where you can very granularly model the request. So is it a REST API? Is it a SOAP API? What should the headers and body look like? And we can even do some request validation. So if we get a 200 or 300, we take path one. But if we see a 400 or 500 status code, we take path two. Um, so you can very granularly map that out. And we can even extract data from the response and pipe it into subsequent blocks in our workflow. On top of the API block, we support notifications through email, through other channels. We have approval processes if we need a human to explicitly take action. And we have quite a wide library of additional workflow blocks that you can just drag and drop to build out your processes. So let's talk about a few specific examples of what we can build out via workflows. Umnitza helps streamline the offboarding or refresh of a device. So when we offboard an employee's endpoints, we can leverage a solution like Retriever or Ship Engine and our API block to automatically send a shipping box to the employee to collect their device. And upon receipt of that device by the organization, we can have a workflow automatically delete or remove a computer in Jamf. The goal being to maintain high data integrity. We want to identify any of these devices, as well as generally devices that haven't checked in in multiple months or even half a year, so that we can remove them and maintain a clean data set free of stale or inactive records. Another key area that admits to help solve related to, to offboarding is your legal hold process. If we detect from the HR system that an employee is to be offboarded or has been placed in a legal hold state, we can turn that information into action. First, we would update the record of the, the status of the record in UNITSA to reflect what we see in the HR system. And then we can proceed to set an extension attribute in Jamf called do not delete. And that way, additional workflows in UNITSA that are helping with the data hygiene will know to not delete that device while it's in this legal hold status. We can then send a Slack notification directly to the employee, as well as an internal channel. 
depending on their endpoints, whether they just have Apple devices or if they have a mix, various systems and various API blocks can be pulled into this workflow so that we ensure proper recognition and enforcement of the legal hold status. Now, we just saw an example of offboarding a device. However, more broadly speaking, another key area Umina to help solve is your user offboarding. When an employee leaves the organization, it's essential that we reclaim any endpoints or accessories in their possession. On top of that, we need to make sure to reclaim any licenses for locally installed software on those endpoints, not to mention all of the various SaaS applications that they have access to as well. In particular, when it comes to SaaS, simply deleting a user from a system is just not enough. From a business continuity standpoint, we need to retain and transfer data as to avoid any disruption or loss of data. As an example with Google Workspace, if we were offboarding an employee, we wouldn't just delete their user. Instead, we would have a workflow using multiple of our API blocks to have a more granular process where when the user is offboarded, we reset their password, we disable two-step verification, we transfer calendar events, transfer G Drive data, and we can even establish an email auto reply so that if anyone else reaches out, they're made aware they're no longer with the organization. Then 60 or uh, 30 days out, we could proceed to actually delete the user and reclaim the license. In this way, we effectively have a grace period where data can be seamlessly transferred to the appropriate individuals. And this is just an example for Google. The same goes for any SaaS application that they have access to. There are plenty of stories where employees have been terminated, however, still show up on the payroll a year later. And other stories where a salesperson, salesperson leaves the organization and the company you know, a month later finds out that all of the data around that employee's deals were gone. According to a recent study by Beyond Identity, approximately 25% of employees can still access their past workplace accounts and emails. And what's even more worrying from the report is that over 41% of those employees admitted to sharing their formal workplace logins. Offboarding employees presents a serious data risk. 70% of intellectual property theft occurs within 90 days before an employee's resignation announcement. And despite these risks, only 29% of organizations have a formal offboarding process. Workflows not only enable us to establish business processes to improve our experience as well as our offboarding, but they can also be used to enforce security and compliance across our technology estate. Based on the status or any event in any one of our underlying systems, we can automatically trigger a device lock in Jamf. For example, if we see that a device has been reported in Jamf as active, however, Carbon Black is indicating that the computer has been compromised, we can use that event in Carbon Black to trigger a lock in Jamf. Now, this lock can be 100% automated, or we could chain it to an approval block where a human must first explicitly approve locking the device. We can extend this process with notifications and other modes of uh, comms as well, such as creating service desk tickets. Similarly, perhaps we see that Jamf is reporting a device is unencrypted for more than a week or month. We can use that event in Jamf to reach out to Sophos or Carbon Black and isolate the device from the network. So you can see the multiple systems working together to achieve your, your uh, business process. Beyond locking a device in Jamf, we're also able to leverage the ability to remote wipe a device. So when an employee reports a device as lost or as stolen, it's important that we lock and wipe the device to prevent any unauthorized data access. And for proper change management, we can certainly document the necessary tickets to handle this, pro this process accordingly. In summary, today's world has technology data across many disparate systems, depending on the platform, the OS, or the device which makes it very difficult to get the true unified picture. In the API-enabled world that we live in, you can aggregate the data for better visibility, which paves the way towards improving your organization's security, compliance, audit, finance, as well as employee experience. Establishing a single pane of glass allows you to automate technology and user-related processes. Check out UNITSA's ETM to help you with your business process orchestrations. Thanks for listening. I hope this has been a helpful overview of ETM and how you can leverage UMNITSA plus Jamf to automate your key IT processes. For more information, please visit us at www.umnitsa.com. Thank you.